all right, I try to get interesting things to show on the channel. Um, and people are really interested in RF things, it seems. I get quite a few um, extra viewers because of the, uh, the Nano VNA and the Tiny SA. Um, and so it would be nice to have some type of RF equipment to do something with and, and maybe use some test equipment and things. Uh, so I found these on eBay and they were $15 free shipping, which I thought was a, a really good deal. And I thought there might be some interesting things inside that we can play with. And uh, now that I've looked at it, it's actually, I think I have an idea for a really cool project. So what is it? It's a 400. <laughs> I don't know why that was written 400 on there. Um, so these are used, they're pulled out of uh, working equipment. And I think what they were in is trucks. <laughs> yes, trucks. Uh, so it is a data radio. And so it takes data and sends it off to the mothership. And um, not only does it like pass information about stuff, it, it's a two-way modem. Uh, it has a GP, GPS uh, connector on the front, so it actually transmits the truck's location on some type of periodic uh, update or stuff. So, so that's pretty cool. So it has a GPS receiver. We can look at that. Uh, it has an antenna connector here. It has some data ports here. It's got a USB, two RS-232s, and then an, an Ethernet. Uh, that's pretty cool. It's got a big heat sink on the back, which means it has to transmit, right? And it looks like a radio on the back. It's just got one connector. It's got the transmit connector on the back. Um, and of course, it's got, you know, 12 volts, really, really big, really big wires for the, uh, for the 12 volts. Um, so what is it? It is a Gemini G3. Um, so as it turns out, uh, there are hams, uh, radio people um, interested in this radio. And there's actually a website with quite a bit of information about it. Uh, it's a Gemini G3, uh, blah, 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 blah. Does it have any dates on it? Yeah, I don't see any dates on it. So um, before we open it up, let me show you a um, some data that I found. Uh, so data radio, Gemini G3 UHF. So it's uh, 450 to 512 megahertz. So I'm thinking we might be able to tune it down to 440 and uh, maybe use it on a handband, so that would be cool. Um, so what does it do? Uh, it's a transceiver uh, with second space diversity receiver, <laughs> uh, 2 to 50 watts, so 50 watts output. So this thing might make a really nice 440 um, amplifier. Uh, control unit, processing, uh, it's got really fancy uh, modulation, DGFSK, differential Gaussian frequency shift king. Whoa, modulation scheme is either two level, two level FSK or four level FSK or eight level FSK, cool. Hmm. Anyway, it's got, uh, it's got some uh, schematics and stuff um, and it talks about it and I guess um, you can actually hook this thing up and uh, I'll see if I can do that. Um, not on this video, but I'll see if I can do that. Um, should be able to either get it through with RS-232 or actually with the, with the uh, Ethernet. And actually, I think it has like a web page interface. You can go to it and you can do things with a web page interface. So see if it actually works. I don't even know if it works. Um, so that'd be cool. The uh, connector in the front got bent really badly. I had to kind of like bang it back to shape. But the back connector looks okay. So, you know what they say. All right. So it definitely looks industrial grade. Like like this cover is like really heavy duty. It's almost it's over it's over like two millimeters thick of, uh, of metal. It's really heavy duty, and it's got a really fancy RF shielding in it. Um, so let's see here. Let me. Let me point it this way, and let me bring the camera down. Okay, so what can we see on this side? This definitely is the receiver side. Um, looks like there's some uh, filtering here. There's some mixers. Um, these are ADE12 mixers. This one, two mixers. Here's an oscillator. 
Uh, not sure what frequency that is. Looks like a a nice oscillator. There might be something cool under here. I don't know what that is. This looks like the main processor. And there's some cans over here. So I'm not sure what's under there. Maybe preamplifiers or something like that. Oh well. So let's uh, let's uh, flip it on its back and. Uh, This out of the way. Let's take the bottom screws out. Oh. Well, the bottom side's got four screws. The top side only had two screws. Must be extra good things on the bottom, huh? All right, let's get this cover off. Oh, wow, uh, maybe not. Oh, I can't get my fingernails under there. Let me get the screwdriver. Oh, there we go. All right, again, a really heavy, heavy lid. And what do we have under here? Well, let's see. We've got, oh, this is the GPS receiver. It's kind of standing up. It's on its own little, it's on little board with a flux cable down there. So it's all by itself. The manual says that it uses a uh, powered G GPS antenna. So I'm not sure if you can hook up a non-powered one and, and do anything with it or not. Um, so that's there. This looks like it all a bunch more digital stuff, but there's a can back here. And I can lift this uh, shield off. And there we go. That's what we're looking for. Let's see if I can zoom in a little more. Okay. So the power comes in here. Big diode here for reverse protection, I guess. And there's the money shot. That one there. That's the big 60-watt uh, uh, FET uh, amplifier, Mitsubishi. So... That's definitely worth 15 bucks all by itself. So supposedly this is good to 60 watts and uh, it needs a driver. And I think this is a 15 watt driver. So, so this takes about one watt in 15 watts out. And then this is 15 watts in 60 watts out. Um, and um, they are just simple amplifiers that are, uh, power fed from the output. So this, these, these coil, this coil feeds the power for this one, like a mimic. And this one feeds it for that one over there. And then, uh, there's a uh, micro strip, uh, um, transmission lines with some capacitors along the way, both in the series and, uh, across it. Um, down over in here, it looks like there's a little, area there's a, something there so that thing there must must be uh, the very very tiny i think i think if i read the data sheet right i think this is something like uh generates 10 db plus 10 dbm so we have plus 10 dbm here and 60 watts here so uh, there's the amplification um so yeah so i think this could be repurposed like i said into a, into an amplifier let's see what this output section is here it's probably a um, most uh if you look at most radio designs they'll have a uh, a filter on the output to kill the harmonics right we, we've measured some of those uh, with spectrum analyzers and you need to kill the second third fourth you know all the harmonics uh, to make it pass fcc so Take this little can off here, and yeah, looks like a looks like an LC filter. Uh, three, three L's, and uh, one, two, three, four, four C's, something like that. Yeah, that looks uh, looks pretty typical. Uh, the output connector is a TNC. If you've never seen one of those before, it's a threaded BNC. Um, yeah, I think this is pretty cool. So. 
What I'd like to do in future videos is to um, see if we can talk to the thing just digitally. I don't know if I really want to use it all that is digital things and stuff. Um, but I do, I think, want to want to try to measure this thing. Uh, we'll see if we can't get it to transmit and measure it and see um, see what that does. And then we'll see if we can't maybe break something over here and hack into it and inject a signal and see if we can send a, a signal through. And then we can sweep it and see what range of frequencies this thing's able to operate at and which range of frequencies this output um, filter will pass. And we'll see if we can tune it down to 440. Now, most of the time, if you have a, um, a radio and you want to kill harmonics, if it's a 500 megahertz radio, you want to kill the one gigahertz, uh, uh, you know, uh, harmonic. And so you'll put a, um, you probably won't put a bandpass filter in, you'll put in a low pass filter. So it'll, it'll let through lows, but it'll kill all the highs. And you can get much better um, dynamic range that way than using a bandpass. So this is probably a low pass filter. Uh, that lets through the 500 and kills everything above, say, 600, right? So this might be a 600 cut filter, which means that 440 should go through this filter. So I'm, I have hopes. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. Uh, I'll try to make sure this comes up in upcoming videos. Uh, if anybody has any uh, ideas about these things, let me know. But uh, looks like fun. Looks like real, real ham radio stuff.